I have got a PhD in life. I'm spending my whole weekend in my pajamas and I'm not doing shit. You don't pay my bills or suck my dick. So like, what do I care what some random person on the internet thinks of me? A new year, new me. You gotta have some fun. God, Tim, everything you touch just like is amazing. And I want to tell that person, no the fuck it's not. I'm only trying to make one fucking person happy and that's Tim Castleman. What up everybody? It's your boy Tim Castleman and welcome back. Welcome back to the Tim Talks podcast. I am broadcasting live via recording weeks, maybe months after I actually recorded it, depending on when you're listening. Uh, In the great state of Texas, a COVID sanctuary state, as I was explaining to all the great people of Las Vegas, Nevada, I'm back in the home studio resting recharging, refueling the batteries uh, for my next uh, business trip at the end of the month uh, and getting a little bit of work done. Now, I don't know when uh, you're listening to this, uh, watching it. If you're watching it on YouTube, it's just a photo. It's never going to change. But I thank you so much uh, for your love uh, and support. We might do video one day, you know, if this thing turns out. You know, once Spotify comes calling, if Spotify calls and goes, Tim, listen, $1 billion, one year, you run the show how you want to. I'll be like, can we put a webcam up in the corner so people can have video, right? So they can stop bitching about being like, it's 2022, Tim. Why don't you have video on your podcast? Anyway, it's coming maybe one day, probably not. Hell, I can barely, uh, I have to pay people to sit in a room when I record a podcast. You think I'm going to suddenly have the strength and determination to do a whole video podcast? You're out of your fucking mind. I'm not trying to get a second job here. Just trying to share my life with you as easily as possible. If the sound sounds different, I'm using a different uh, setup. I'm also, again, here in the office, uh, in the house. Uh, It's all hardwood floors. I have nothing on the walls because I'm not married and I'm a dude, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you're listening to whenever I'm recording this on January 12th, 2022. And today is the five-year anniversary of the worst day of my life. The beginning of the end, as they say, man, what a fucking day. And my life will forever be how I was before this day and how I was after this day. That's uh, how big of an impact it had. So let's go back, friends. Story time with Uncle Tim, right? Uh, 2017. It's a Thursday. I only know that because uh, that's the day of my weekly poker game uh, with uh, several other CEOs here in Lubbock. That's the fancy title I put on me getting my ass spanked for like five hours, losing $200, coming home pissed off as if I had just lost the keys to the castle. Well, on that night, I went to my poker game. Let's go back, right? Because there's always a a step. So I guess what would be the 10th uh, of January, my ex-wife and I, spoiler alert, did not go well, right? Like Titanic, I want to let you know, everyone died. There were no survivors right now. So you're not like, oh, man. Um, On January 10th, my wife and I had a big argument. I won't uh, get into the specifics of it, um, but. You know, it was a repetitive issue that we had faced in our marriage, and it was rearing its head uh, yet again. In addition to that, we had recently lost one of our dogs, Ricky, uh, to Westy lung disease. And I know people out there are like, what's the big deal? It's a dog. We didn't have kids. We treat our dogs like they're members of the family. So it hurts when we lose them. Hurts real, real, real bad, right? Uh, So we had this fight. Uh, The 11th, we really didn't speak to each other. But there wasn't anything that I was at the time, alarmed with. I was kind of like, well, we've had a couple rough days, you know, like, we'll, we'll get through. Uh, and on the 12th, uh, I took a nap because I'm old and woke up to my ex coming to let me know that she was going to go have uh, lunch or dinner with her sister, which wasn't uncommon for her to go out on Thursdays and kind of do what she needed to do and wanted to do. Um, and as a result, she was going to go. Uh, I said, okay, you know, I, I got uh, the worst hug ever. You know, looking back on it, it was just limp and it was it just, yeah, there was no emotion behind it because she was dead and already had moved on, unbeknownst to me, right? I thought 
we were dealing with a patient that was on life support. Little did I know it had died two days ago and rigor mortis was setting in. So anyway, go to my poker game. And the whole time that's happening, I'm texting her because one of our other dogs wasn't feeling well. And she's not responding. And that's pretty common uh, because, you know, uh, she's hard of hearing. No, no disrespect. So am I. Um, so sometimes she doesn't hear it. A lot of times uh, her phone will be, um, you know, in another room or on the charger or not charged. You know, whatever happens. I don't understand how women uh, can keep a phone at 2% battery, battery life their entire time. I'm like, do you ever charge this fucking thing in, right? Maybe if you shut off uh, the jackpot sounds that happen every time you get a Poshmark update, a Poshmark update, you know, things would be different. But uh, I digress. So she's not really texting me. And I'm like, OK, well, that's, you know, pretty star- standard par for the course. I'm not, um, you know, I'm not concerned at all. Uh, then afterwards, I actually won a little money that time. So I went to IHOP, my favorite celebratory meal, uh, which was just like, you know, let me get 600 pounds of candy on top of pancakes. And then could you give me one egg white with some turkey bacon just to even it out? And, uh, you know, nice little water since you guys are Pepsi products, which is the only thing I hate about IHOP. It's like serve Coke products, damn it. We didn't get to be in the top 1% of the world to serve Pepsi products to the people. What the fuck is wrong with you? Who drinks Pepsi? How is that thing still, a, how is that product still viable? I don't know anybody. I've never seen anyone willingly drink a Pepsi. And if you do, please find help immediately. What the fuck is wrong with people that drink Pepsi? Anyway. I, uh, you know, so I have my meal uh, done and it's like two, three in the morning. These games used to go to like one o'clock in the morning. Then we all realized we were old and like, hey, let's call it at midnight. Can we do that? So we don't waste the next day. And I drive home, you know, she's a early sleeper or was then. And as a result, uh, you know, again, I wasn't expecting anything. I wasn't ex- expecting a response. I just thought, oh, no big deal. You know, I'll address it with her tomorrow as far as be like, hey, you know, did you get the text? Uh, did you see about the updates of the puppy? All, all that stuff. Um, and the first time I know there's a problem is I click the button on the garage door opener. Yes, I don't mean to brag, right? But I have a garage door opener and I click that and it opens up and uh, her car's not there. Well, that's an immediate problem because uh, she always parked in the garage since uh Day one of us being married. I didn't mind that, you know. She had the fancy newer car. In, enjoy, do your thing. Uh, and I notice uh, there's a flattened out moving box where she used to park. And I was like, well, that's weird because we didn't have moving boxes because we had moved into this house for since 2012, right? So guess what happens? I walk in the door. I walk in the second door. Yes, we have a mud room. Please, please keep your anger to a minimum, right? We don't drink Pepsi and we have mud rooms here in West Texas. And uh, I notice there's a white piece of paper on the counter. And in her handwriting, it says, Tim, I have made the decision to leave. I will email you the hockey tickets for your birthday trip next weekend or something to the effect of that. I actually have the letter, uh, not less than um, 12 feet away from me, like less than six feet away from me in a drawer. It's actually a copy. The original uh, resides in the IRS uh, halls, which will be a topic for another uh, episode. So anyway, I'm like, oh, shit. So it's like two, three o'clock in the morning. And, you know, I do a quick perusal of the house and this chick is gone. Okay, this was not a I'm packing a weekend bag. I mean, this was a surgical extraction of the cancer in her life, uh, you know, or I guess my life. I don't know the right way to say that, but I mean, it was a surgical extraction of all of her shit. I've jokingly said that, you know, she practically went through every toilet bowl or toilet roll, uh, toilet paper roll, English, Tim, English. And uh, as a result, like took the two ply down to one ply. And I was like, oh, shit. So stupidly, and of course, this is all hindsight 2020, okay? The shit I'm going to share with you, a lot of it I'm probably not proud of uh, today. And if I'm not, like, I'll tell you. But at the time, like, you, you walk in, my wife is gone. She has abandoned our marriage. Uh, my dog, by the way, is stolen and gone. All of her shit is gone. It's like she just, you know, 
she she set it up perfect, you know. Uh, she planned it out absolutely perfect. She had everyone ready to go and in and out by the time that I was still uh, doing my thing, which hats off to her. Hats fucking off to her. If I hire, you know, hire them as fucking movers, they were so proficient. So we start texting, of course, you know, well thought out sane text him. No, of course not. You know, we start just attacking each other. And finally, about 8 a.m. that morning, uh, the following morning, so I guess it'd be the 13th, um, I finally go to sleep and I finally pass out. And as a result of that, uh, I missed about 50 calls from my best friend, who I found out later because he couldn't get a hold of me, called my parents and told them that my wife had left me because she had texted him. Uh, she texted him and the housekeeper. She was more worried about telling them she was leaving uh, than me. So as a result, uh, just the worst day of my fucking life, guys. I mean, I don't know any other way to describe it. I mean, I locked all the doors, I shut all the blinds, and it began uh, a whole new life for me. Later in the day, I got a call from my banker asking me about the new boat I had bought. I told him I hadn't purchased such a boat, and he said, oh, well, that's funny because half your money's gone. So, you know, my ex claims up until the last time we spoke that this was not a planned out thing, that this was something that she did spontaneous, but I find that incredibly hard to believe considering the surgical precision at which it took place and the fact that she hit all the bases, you know, hit all the bank accounts, had uh, all the mail changed, you know, all of those wonderful things uh, happened. And 2017, you guys got to remember, this is the beginning of a year, right? I think I'm walking into 2017 with my dick swinging over my shoulders thinking, this is great. I got a good business. I'm running probably about close to half a million dollars a year. You know, I got a staff, you know, I got a wife, I got the things are, you know, we're moving on up like the Jeffersons, moving on up, moving on up, moving on up, right? That was me. I was like, oh shit, big dick Tim coming through. I had the ego and the attitude uh, and the anger to match, right? Um, and as a result of that, uh, as a result of January 12th, like I, my life changed overnight. I didn't go to bed until like two, three o'clock in the morning most days, I'd be lucky if I could make it to 7 p.m. Uh, I had to go on antidepressants for the first time in my life. Turned out to be a great thing. Should have done it years before. But, you know, this really spawned me having to do that. Um, had to intensify my therapy. I mean, you know, you think you're working on some shit with a therapist and then your wife leaves you in the middle of it and you're like, maybe, just maybe I wasn't working on it as hard as I should have. Or like, oh, OK, that's what that warning, that warning light that was going off in the corner there. I, I ignored it. And now my engine exploded and now we've got critical failure. And now, you know, we got to try and put this thing back together. You know, the first thing I tried to put back together before myself was our marriage, and that didn't happen. I mean, I wish I could come back and say, guys, it was a rough day, but we learned from it, and we got our hearts uh, restored and renewed, and we, you know, we came back together, and our marriage is stronger than ever. Did not fucking happen. We met like two or three times after that. As a result of that, she told me at the end of the month of January, hey, I, I want a divorce. Like, this thing ain't fixable. I want a divorce. And I was like, well, that fucking sucks. But I mean, you know, OK. And I told her then I was like, hey, as far as um, I'm concerned, like we're we're single now, like we're getting a divorce. So whatever happens, happens. Now, I need to explain that to you because I need to understand it myself as I apply lip gloss. But you can't see it's the winter. My gums are a flapping. My lips are a chapping. I had a really terrible network established. Still not the best, but it's better than it was before, right? I didn't have a ton of friends. I had one friend that I hung out with 99% of the time locally. I had friends across the, the nation, but none there. Um, you know, I, I wasn't and still am not involved in any spiritual activities. Uh, my hobbies uh, were non-existent. I mean, it just, it was, it, I mean, my life and my son sat and rose uh, or sat, rose and set. There we go. It's called English. Guys, it's it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. There's not even any drinking involved. This is terrible. 
I might be having a stroke while, while recounting this stuff. Kidding. It's not happening. All right. Um, do I need to really tell you that I'm kidding, that I'm not having a stroke? I think you wouldn't understand if I went like that. You'd be like, oh, shit. All that bad shit Tim talked in that first episode. Coming back to hit him now. Short story long, I didn't have a social network. I didn't have a network of anything. And the only thing I was doing was I wasn't even working. I, mean, I was just sleeping every single fucking day away. I mean, I guys, I would sleep for 12 hours. I'd get up, try to do a little bit of work. And after two hours, I'd be so tired. I'd have to like crawl back into bed. I, I could, I remember I made a drive to Dallas just to drive. That's all. I drove from Lubbock to Dallas. I had to take a four hour nap afterwards. I was so exhausted. I mean, it just, my body just completely shut down and to the point that I went to the doctor in March of that year and was like, Hey, bad news. I'm dying. I think I have leukemia or something suddenly come on because I have no energy and I feel like death and et cetera, et cetera. Um, turns out that when you sleep all the time away, you get no vitamin D in your body and that makes you a sweepy boy. So as a result of that, like, you know, I, man, I just, I lost my mind. I mean, that's the best way I can describe it in the nicest way. And I, you know what? I take that back. I didn't lose my mind. I was like, all right, well, bet if I'm, if I'm single, we're going to make the most of it. And and really what it was was me trying to mask the pain uh, and the hurt and not really work on the shit that I needed to work on, right? If I could be dealing with dating, yes, you heard me right, dating, because I thought, hey, my wife just left me. I think the best thing to do immediately following our separation is to start dating again, right? Don't learn from any of these things. Don't take a pause. Don't catch your breath. Don't, you know... Don't do any of that. Instead, just immediately get right back on that horse because that's what you're supposed to do, right? Dust yourself off and get right back on that horse. I think that's terrible fucking advice, right? If a, if a horse bucks you off, stop and go, well, what the fuck happened there? How do I make sure that doesn't hopefully happen again? Then get back on that fucking horse. It's okay to take a pause. I did not, right? This is advice I'm telling you, but I did not take myself. I fucking... Just started to quote Amy Schumer, you know, try to get my body count up. I mean, I was a, I was a man whore, right? It, uh, eventually, but I immediately got into a relationship that was what it was, and it just, yeah, I mean, it was just terrible, of course. Uh, but so many fucking negatives uh, from it. Depression. I spent probably two thirds of the year in bed. My self esteem and self worth were at an all time low. Uh, just everything to the point that, you know, I, I went and did some really cool things, which I can talk about another time. I found a, a um, well, I'll cover that in a minute. You know, basically at the end of 2017, I'm in my counselor's office and she's like, all right, well, Tim, let's recap the year and everything you accomplished and did in, 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 this year. And as I'm telling her everything, I'm I'm bawling hysterically because I'm so fucking weary and tired. I had done everything I could to try and run away from this problem. I tried to fuck my way out of it. I tried to drink my way out of it. I tried to spend my way out of it. I tried to, you know, I mean, you name it, man. I was fucking trying all of it, trying, just trying to do anything I could to numb that pain, to keep my mind off of it and um, to survive but ultimately not to work on the shit that I needed to work on. And it became very clear and evident that by the end of 2017, the beginning of 2018, I had some serious work to do. That didn't stop me from getting into another failed relationship. But you know what? In 2019, I took that shit serious. Uh, and I did. I mean, I haven't been in a relationship since. Um, I was joking with a friend yesterday, like it's been so long since I've had sex, I'm starting to feel married again. Like, this is awesome. And those were the negatives. And there's a ton of them, but you guys can go back to the Two Drink Tim podcast days and listen to that back then if you if you really want to uh, get in the, the weeds of it. But I'll tell, tell you there were also some positives. I found a new hobby of photography that saved my life and changed my life. And if I wouldn't constantly put my foot in my fucking mouth, uh, would change it even more. But I can't keep... I keep liking to step on my own dick, even as a progressive uh, person, as far as when it comes to therapy and working on myself, right? Um, so I found a new hobby. I found a new interest that is 
outside the realm of work. I, I don't care what's happening at work or in relationships or anything. When I go shoot a show like I will tonight, that's all I'm focused on. That's all I want to focus on. That's all I want to enjoy. Um, and I do enjoy it. And it's been great. Uh, I really have learned from this. Like when life slaps you in the fucking balls, you know, when, when it walks up like a plastic or a toddler with plastic fucking shoes and does a, a fucking stomp on your nuts like they're crushing grapes, like you have no choice um, but to learn. Well, no, you, have, you do have the choice not to learn. And I'd already done that in a previous relationship. And I was like, well, wait a minute. Hold on. What's the one constant in all these failing relationships? It's me. Then perhaps maybe I wasn't a uh, the Van Gogh uh, or the Mona Lisa, um, you know, I wasn't any of Van Gogh's painting, uh, paintings or the Mona Lisa. Uh, you know, I was not a museum work underneath glass finished. Uh, I was, as we all are, as I come to find out, and we all will be uh, for eternity, a work in progress until we pass away. Right. Then we're, then we're done. Then they put us under the glass and go observe, report and inspect. Um, I guess it would be inspect, observe and report. Sure. Today's dyslexia day, apparently. Right. Maybe that's how I remember it. So there were a, a shit ton of negatives, several positives, and I I don't know the road forward because I thought, okay, 2017, things can't get much worse. And Life's Narrator was like, uh, but they can, or just wait, you know, like Ron Papil. But wait, there's more. Staff exodus. But wait, there's more. Break up with girlfriend. Turns out I get super depressed about it. But wait, there's more. Lose a lawsuit uh, at a court hearing I wasn't even given notification of. But wait, there's more. Lose the appeal despite the prosecution never pointing any evidence that I received any of the documentation he sent and everything that we presented. But wait, there's more. Now I have to file bankruptcy. I've lost my personal property. Uh, you know, I'm still in my house because thank God it's homesteaded, but I have to start over at 42. And I can't help but wondering, but wait, there's more. Like what is fucking next? So today in my little daily pocket journal, when I wrote under the thankful part, I decided to be like Kanye and suck my own dick. And say that today, above all, I am thankful for me. And specifically, I'm thankful that I have survived all of the hardest days of my life. Now, I don't want to sit here and do some fake book or Instagram thing and say, you know, I thrived and I've survived. No, no, no. Guys, listen, I've written my suicide note on multiple occasions. I've sent goodbye text uh, to friends asking them to let me go. I have thought of and planned out my own death. I have had the darkest thoughts, days, depression, all of these things. And that's in spite of medication. That's in spite of, at times, weekly therapy. So I don't want to tell you, again, I will always say this. I'm not coming at you from the top of the mountain. Yeah, I'm coming at you a few steps ahead, but I'm not telling you that I have this all figured out. What I will tell you helped me was building up that social network a little bit more, redefining what success looked like to me, redefining what happiness looked like to me, taking a pause, catching my breath and working on the shit I needed to work on because that's all I can do. I mean, fuck, it's five years later and I still apologize to my ex-girlfriend and my ex-wife on a regular basis. I'd say four or five days out of the week. And I, I'm apologizing to an empty house and silence. I mean, there's nobody here. There is no time machine. Nobody's coming back. The only way to go is forward. And I know that sounds like David Goggins type shit, but it's just the truth. It fucking sucks. Look, man, if I had a time machine and I could take the information I had now back to those days, I would do things totally different. But I can't. Nor do I think that would have solved all the problems in our marriage. I think it would have put a Band-Aid on an ever-growing crack at our foundation, which was that we're two different people. She's a big fan of Jesus. I'm a big fan of weed. 
she doesn't like my humor or my music. I like to watch 12 year old, you know, poop and, and shit joke comedy and make inappropriate comments and tease. You can't tease someone that doesn't like to be teased. I mean, it just, it just was incompatible. She stayed with me because she wanted to be loved and she put up with me and all my issues because she didn't want to be left alone. And eventually that, that scale tipped to where her being alone seemed better than us being together. And I have no problem that we got divorced, but I'll never forgive her for leaving the way and the manner in which she did. And I'll never forget it. People be like, Tam, you can't hold on to it forever. I'm letting it go more and more each year. But just like I can't go back in time, neither can she. We tried our best. It just didn't work out. And that completely and totally fucking sucks. And I've cried unlimited amounts of tears. I've been sad, depressed. I've allowed it to negatively affect my self-worth and self-value. I put 100% of the blame on my shoulders and 0% on hers. Instead of looking at it a healthy way that we both had our issues that made us incompatible. And maybe one day I will be able to forgive her, but I'm not actively seeking it out, nor do I want to. Yeah, so, I fucking hate this day, but I know a new day is coming tomorrow. And if you're out there and you're hurting, first of all, talk to somebody. I know, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I feel like a burden to my friends and family for bringing shit up, but you gotta do it, man, or woman. Because that outside perspective, even if it doesn't sink in at the time, having an outside perspective to say, hey, man, it ain't that bad. You'll get through this. You got this. Maybe you're like me and like, I need specific steps. Seek them out. Counseling. Medication, if necessary. Self-help books. Seminars. Whatever. It fucking sucks. It's not fucking easy. Our life doesn't get fixed in 27 minutes, like on the sitcom world. There'll be time where you'll doubt every step of the way. There's times when you'll think I'm making zero fucking progress at all. And then one day a switch flips and that big thing becomes a little smaller. And as time goes on, smaller and smaller and smaller. This year I actually had to look up the date that she left me, whereas before... I could have told you down practically to the minute. And there's a ton more shit I could say about it. I could tell you about her showing up drunk at my my favorite bar and crushing my fucking heart in real time. But I've done that before. And at some point, you got to let those wounds heal. You can't just keep ripping the scar off or scab off being like, no, I want a darker scar. You know, I share this shit because I want people to know that it's not all roses and glitter and gold, but also... It makes me feel something, makes me feel some emotions and makes me feel like I've got emotions and feelings um, because I don't I mean, I don't get to express that very often. I mean, the last girl, this is too much information, but I don't give a shit talking about the worst day of my life. And now I'm worried about it. The last girl I had sex with, I stopped during the middle of sex, during my prime work, when I was putting in the work, when I was rounding third Coming home for her, I stopped and I was like, can, can I just hold you? And she was like, well, my pussy just dried up. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we can take a minute since you just cut yourself there. All right. I mean, I think I figured it out the other day. It's been like, shit, this is getting really dark. And I don't I don't mean it to. But, dude, it's been since probably June of 2019. So, 20 you know, go, going to 19 to 20, 20 to 21. I mean, it's been like two and a half years since I've had someone spend the night or been involved in a, a serious relationship. Now, look, I, I ended what was probably the best relationship of my life because I needed to get the work done and I wasn't going to be able to do that in a relationship. And I ended that. Right or wrong, I did. Because I had to do the work and I've done the work. But it doesn't make me hate this day any less. So, don't uh, drive your car into oncoming traffic. If you're going through some serious shit, get some help. Talk to some people. They say it gets better. I will tell you that you do make growth and improvement. 
And again, one day this this big fucking rock that is crushing you, that is sitting on your chest, that is causing you to lose sleep, that is causing you not to be able to breathe, that's causing all these issues for you, it will not feel like that anymore. And if you let time do its thing, the memory's dull, and so do the pain. But if you don't fucking address or fix what you need to, the shit's going to come back. And I'm glad that I have addressed what I needed to address so that if I ever do make the mistake of getting married again, maybe this one will stick. Third time's a charm, guys. All right, I'm out. Uh, Thanks for listening as always. I uh, promise not to be so depressing next time. Hey, look, man, some of these are going to be sad. I, I don't want to be. I don't want to be a sad little boy all the time. But you know, when po- shit like this pops up, I, I got to share it with you because it's what I'm experiencing. And I told you guys I'd always share the good, the bad, and uh, the ugly. And I don't mean just my uh, naked photos. Yeah, uh, naked photos. 